But Carl Jung once said that internal contradictions are played out in the world as fate. You know, is that the thing about propositions, if they're accurate, is that they represent real states of being in the world. And okay. if you entertain a set of propositions that are internally contradictory, then you're going to run yourself into all sorts of sharp objects and 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 dead ends. And that's exactly what's happening. And it it it. Every time, and I've thought this really for three years, every time you think that there's no possible way that this can get more absurd, then one more example comes up where it's more absurd. And I would say the situation in BC is precisely that. I mean, one of the women that he's persecuting, because I think he and this terrible bureaucracy is persecuting, was an immigrant woman. I believe she was Muslim, who had a, an aesthetics... Uh, yeah. business in her own home her and basement. as a consequence of of the negative publicity or the publicity and the pressure she shut down her business shut, you yes, know? and has. god only knows what that means for her family and well and for her and, and you were asking about courage earlier you know um one of the things that i have watched quite frequently is the way that people respond to being mobbed on twitter yeah you know now i've almost stopped Looking at Twitter, it's been about three months that I've taken a Twitter hiatus, let's say. I still post, I, I don't even have my password anymore. I send what I want to post to a third party and they post it because it keeps me out of the... An antiseptic distance. That's right, exactly. And, and, and that's exactly the right way of thinking about it. You know, people, civilized people, and, and I mean that in, in, yeah. in civilized, socialized people, cannot tolerate being mobbed. Because, no, they can't. because and there's a reason for that. You see, you, you said, with regards to the British Columbia uh, Human Rights Tribunal, you know, if there's 16 people on one side and one on the other, you might be thinking that the 16 people are right. More or less. Right, right. But then you think, think of the situation where you've said something on Twitter and, you know, 6, a thousand people yeah. mob you publicly. I mean, your first response, if you're... Your first response is going to be to examine your own conscience and see yep. how you transgressed. It's not really much different psychologically. I mean, it's lesser, I suppose, but it's not that much different than waking up one morning and coming to your door and finding a mob of your neighbors angrily aggregated yep. on your lawn. You know, it's a terrible shock for people, and it really hurts them. You know, they're often, they're often by all accounts, you know, damaged for lengthy periods of time by this and, and their first their first impulse is to apologize which is which is truly the wrong thing like the right yeah, thing it is. to do is stand well the right thing to do is to is to is to understand that if you haven't done anything wrong you have, you don't apologize now that's a very difficult yeah, it's very difficult and then to wait because if you wait 2 weeks People will come to your defense, yeah, they will. but it takes the people who will come to your defense two weeks to get their act together, where it takes the activists who are unbelievably organized 15 seconds to mob well, you. Well, there's two, two points to draw out of there. First of all, because you have now been almost fire hosed uh, into the world of celebrity, multimedia, and vast attention. Uh, I've dabbled in a lesser zone for a long while, so you, you adjust to the kind of swirl, okay? But what I've never forgotten, and I'm serious, uh, is that people who are not in it at all, uh, my father, or the mechanic down the road, or the doctor over here, doesn't that be class? If you haven't had media, and if you haven't adjusted to it, and suddenly your name, and I'm just backing up your point, your name suddenly becomes the center of, of some great Twitter snowstorm uh, in pejorative terms, and people are speaking of you in the, with the most vulgar uh, responses. It is a terror. Uh, it isn't to me, because I, I dismiss it, but people who have not experienced it, it is really, really, really something that it's an unbearable pain. Yes. And they bring it down with club force and the great, uh, the great megaphones of the national networks in the states, etc. Uh, you can expunge a person's personality with this kind of brutality. Yes, well, and it's permanent, right? Because the record never disappears. So. And I, I want to put a personal question to you now. When you, because I, I know you had been on YouTube, you, play, you knew the media in that sense, but you weren't a media person. In your baptism, uh, harsh as it was, how hard was it in the first couple of weeks for you 
to find balance and scale. You may be a clinical psychologist, and you are obviously mature. Oh, I don't think I've ever found balance and, and scale. <laughs> well, join my club. <laughs> you know, I, I, don't, I don't believe it. I mean, I've, I'm well, I, here I, still. I mean, in, the, in the, the, that great throbbing moment when all this stuff came in, and he hates this one, and your name is flashed all over the world. That was the first real magnitude of media attack on you. Yeah. So even for you, how was, how was that period? Well, it was dreadful, I mean, especially the first couple of months because, well, because the attention was, well, it has been since then, but the attention was unbelievably intense. I mean, I had, there were days upon days where there were reporters lined up coming into the house one after the other, and, and, and that, that's, that really hasn't stopped. I mean, it stopped, let's say, in the last two months since since the end of March, however long ago that is, because mm -hmm. I've shut myself off because of yeah. my, I, I have some family health trouble that's very serious. But um, I don't think I've ever adjusted to it. Mm -hmm. um, what's made it bearable, I would say, and, and some of it's been very good, you know. Yeah, it, I know it I mean, it's taken my life, which was fairly broad. I, yeah. I had a fairly broad range of experiences, partly because I'm a clinical psychologist, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's taken it from good and bad to yeah. great and yeah. unbearable. And I yo-yo between those states. Um, what's helped is, well, the first thing is, is that you know, I determined right from the beginning that I was going to say carefully mm -hmm. what I believed to be true because there wasn't a safer route than that. It's interesting. You know, that, that in the final analysis, it wasn't certain that anything would protect me. Better than but, doing the right well, thing. Well, whether that would work or not was debatable, but there wasn't a better option. Yeah, I can understand and, and, that. And Apparently. I believe that, you know, yeah. I, I still believe that. Um, and I think the success of what I've done is an indication of that. The success of my book, say, which is yeah. also absolutely overwhelming. I mean, it's, it's impossible to... Yeah, the, the Especially, I, I'm kind of old, you know, I'm just about 60. And, and, you're, and you're white, and you're and, male. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's all of those things. You are a bad man. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the old part, I think, has to do with, with the ability to I'm even to older adapt. and whiter than <laughs> male. <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know, it, it's, it's fulfilled, and the lectures and the podcasts as well, um, and the YouTube videos, they've fulfilled a need, which also is something that's very difficult for me to to reconcile myself to, you know, I mean, even on, every time I walk down the street, yeah. someone stops me, someone stopped me on yeah. the way here, you and know, sure. and, and as opposed to my treatment at the hand of a minority of journalists, which has been atrocious upon occasion, and, and academics as well, the treatment I receive from people in public is so positive that it's almost unbearable. Let me tell you a personal anecdote that relates to you. Uh, I don't mix my old stuff with family members, but my sister is a non-political kind of person. And uh, as I say, I don't mix those things. She called me, and she's out of this world altogether. She called me about, I don't know, a year ago. Have you seen Dr. Jordan Peterson? Do you know Dr. Lovely stuff. And she was following the videos, the, bib the biblical uh, lectures. And yeah. She's a smart, uh, nice woman. And then, that was one thing, that, that was unsolicited, she's not in the world of publicity, she doesn't follow fads, but somehow your name got in there, and she's watching these with great attention, great enjoyment actually. But the better one, I won't be particular, a friend of mine from home, uh, never finished school, he's about 55, 56, so we're not into the teen cohorts, yeah, early 20, yeah. and he calls me up, I don't think he's read a book in six years. And he says, I've been watching this Peterson fellow. And, you know, I can't re reproduce what he was saying. It was just that he found such comfort. Yeah. And he, he found such support. And my thought when I was hearing this, it was some way to relay it to you uh, in all the, the ping pong back and forth that you're going to. Yeah. These voices are saying something. You're doing something really fine. For people that I, I could never project would be receiving the message. It's, 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 and, and, and it's very, this is also something that's been very difficult to, 
both understand and I would say in a strange way to tolerate because um, I've become opened up to the trouble that people have in a way that far exceeds even what I experienced as a clinical psychologist. Yeah, yeah. You know, last year, my wife and I went to 160 cities. Oof. Yeah, it was, well, we figured we better make oh. hey, well, the sun shines. So, um, you're a stronger man than I. You know, the, well, you get caught up in, you get caught up in, 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 in the wave of events, you know, and, the, and the adrenaline and, self supplies. Yeah, well, and it was, it was, it was exciting and worthwhile, and the demand was there, you know, and, and yes. um, I enjoy lecturing, and I used the opportunity. I delivered a different lecture every night, and I used the opportunity to think, you know, and, and to communicate, which, of course, is what. And in a, in a psychologically, in a manner that I believed would be mm -hmm. psychologically helpful, but it was also, I think, and I don't know exactly what the cumulative effect has been mm -hmm. on me, um, but I had no idea the degree to which so people many were people. dying for a word of encouragement. So many people want... That's what my friend was about. I'm speaking back to you now on the same thing. I know what he was saying. He had felt no soft rain for a long, long time. Yeah. And he was in this camp of the truly neglected. Yeah, you, yeah, You're yeah. uneducated. You're not particularly sophisticated. You've got a low-paying job. Who gives a fuck about you? Yeah. And then someone is out there of stature and, pre and credibility. And this guy who would never be in your circle... Never. Yeah. yeah. So you send an echo ping to him, and he was calling me to say, my God, this is so good. So allow yourself to feel good. Cause yeah, well, it, it, the thing is, the funny thing is, is that it, 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 doesn't, feel, it doesn't feel good. Um, you know, and that might be a reflection of my general state of mind, which is very unsettled mm -hmm. at the moment for the reasons that I told you. And, well, because of all of everything that's happened over the last few years, but to get a taste of the depth of yeah. despair that, that can be ameliorated with, with not much more than, you know, some, some words of encouragement, some, some statement that, you know, you as a human being aren't intrinsically worthless. worthless and that you have a spirit worth preserving and that the things that you do in your life that you do correctly are important. It's like people are literally dying yeah. for lack of that. And I, I mean that, I mean that, no, uh, I know, I know honestly, I, I don't know how many people have told me, and these are very hard things to hear. It's been hundreds of people, because I, I meet people after each of my lectures, you know, who've told me that yeah. they are still alive because they watched my lectures or because they read my book or, and then they usually have a good story to tell, you know, about what sort of hell they happened to be in six months earlier and what they did to pull themselves out and how that's brought their family back together or helped them advance in their career or got them out of bed yeah. or stopped them from using heroin or be being alcoholic. And, or jumping and, off of, yeah. Yeah, well, and, and, you know, all of that is, I'm... Is it something that you, at some point have at least to shield against? No. No? No. No. It's, it's, well, and I'm, I'm in, in these interviews, and, and more frequently, I've tended to get emotional, and, and the reason for that is the f health problems that are plaguing my family, at least in part. I'm, yes, I understand. Um, so that makes me more much more fragile than I should otherwise be, despite my, despite my exhortations to people to, you know, bear their, bear their cross. My, my friend, hill. I'm a cross for you to bear. Listen, I thank you greatly <clears throat> for your courtesy, because you obviously didn't have to do this, and I really do admire what you're doing. And I will say on behalf of the people who will never meet you, that you are a very fine person. Thank you. And You're thank you very much for the support that you've shown me over the last two years. I it was do, much appreciated. I would do it 20 times. Well, I appreciate that very much. It was a pleasure to meet you and to speak to you. Pleasure to meet you, sir. I tell you that.